the first thing that we did uh, that back in 1999 was look for uh, mitochondrial and muscle disorders where creatine levels were very low. And if they're low, it makes sense to replace them. So we did find that mitochondrial DNA disorders had very low levels of total and phosphocreatine, muscular dystrophy, and inflammatory muscle disease. So we and others have gone on to see whether supplementing with creatine helps these people who are deficient. So what is creatine? Creatine is made by all of us every single day of our lives from kidney and pancreas to make what's called guanidino acetate, which is taken up from the liver and makes about one to two grams of creatine per day. We also get creatine from exogenous consumption. So fish is extremely high, and it's estimated that 10% of the Danish and Norwegian population are chronically creatine loaded uh, because they eat so much herring, which has an extremely high concentration of creatine. If you are a vegan vegetarian, you get no creatine whatsoever in your diet, and your endogenous synthesis can't keep up. And they've shown that muscle and brain creatine levels are low. And in those vegan vegetarians, uh, when you give them creatine, it actually improves their uh, mental capacity, cognitive uh, functioning, and problem-solving ability. So what happens with creatine is most of it ends up in muscle to be used to provide energy, but it also decreases muscle protein breakdown. And creatine is eventually broken down in muscle to creatinine and excreted through the kidneys. So the top here is a muscle contracting. When muscles contract, we need energy. So the first buffer for energy is ATP, which we have in very limited reserves in our muscle. Within a fraction of a second, our ATP levels drop and we have to resynthesize them. So what happens is phosphocreatine exists uh, in the muscle in very large quantities to buffer this. So when ATP is broken down to contract muscle, uh, it is rephosphorylated back to ATP by phosphocreatine. Now, although the concentration is very high in muscle, it still only provides for eight to 10 seconds of maximal muscle contraction. But what it does is it provides an energy shuttle. So when we start contracting muscle, uh, we get an increase in creatine, which crosses into the mitochondria to actually activate the mitochondria. So there's a very elaborate creatine phosphocreatine shuttle whereby energy stress in the cytosol or the sort of outer part of the um, cells triggers the mitochondria to start respiring. And studies have shown that adding creatine to a cell system turns on mitochondria and gets them respiring. So for this reason, we suggested it would be reasonable to try this in mitochondrial patients based on a whole bunch of observations. People have shown, we and others, that older adults increase their muscle, increase strength and power. Innumerable animal studies have shown in most models, including our studies of Lou Gehrig's disease, Huntington's and Parkinson's, whoops, there's a decrease in what's called neurotoxicity or damage to the neurons. There's a direct and indirect antioxidant effect. And in studies where they make a, a womb um, have low oxygen to simulate what happens to poor children who get cerebral palsy, there's much less damage to the brain of animals if you have uh, anoxia in the womb. And people are now talking about supplementing pregnant women with creatine to prevent children from birth trauma. The other thing that's been shown is with stroke, in animal models of stroke, if the animals are given creatine before a stroke, there's much less damage. Uh, that's also been shown in head injury as well. So for uh, patients with MELAS, you don't know when you're going to get the stroke, so loading with creatine uh, would seem to make some sense. And studies in the most muscular dystrophy mouse showed increases in mitochondrial function. So we've done studies. This is a study of uh, exercise and creatine in older adults. These are men and women over the age of 65 who did an exercise program three times per week. And in those supplemented with creatine, you can see that we could increase the muscle creatine levels uh, dramatically. And that was stat statistically significant. No increase just with training as if you don't take any creatine. And what that meant is they got more muscle mass and they got more strength gains when they were lifting weights. So clearly anyone who's doing weight training, creatine is just low hanging fruit. Probably 200 studies have shown similar results that we can better increase muscle mass and strength if we're exercise training. Now, what if you're not exercise training? This was our first study in patients with mitochondrial disease with just creatine, nothing else in the supplement. And we had seven patients with MELAS syndrome, randomized crossover. What that means is neither us nor the patients knew what they were on. They took a placebo, they took the drug, or they took drug and placebo. And only after the study was over did we know what they took and we could do the analysis. 
So they took 10 grams a day, which is essentially um, two heaping teaspoons. And then we put them down to essentially one level teaspoon for a week. And what we found was strength went up uh, in both the hand and the foot by about 11%. And this is a fatiguing trial. So we did this on and off for a minute. And what we found is that strength was better maintained. Now you might say, well, who cares about 11%? That means nothing. But if you're doing repetitive activity, like let's say you were vacuuming for a minute or any type of repetitive activity, if you can get 11% extra bang for your buck, uh, that does have some uh, consequences of benefit. The other way to think about it is in our boys with Duchenne dystrophy, which is a horrible degenerative disease where boys die, uh, we poison them with prednisone. We give them one of the most toxic drugs known to mankind with tons of side effects. Every one of them becomes osteoporotic. They all get cataracts. Uh, they all become diabetic and obese later on, and they get a 6% increase in strength. And yet that was deemed to be beneficial enough uh, that we keep giving them a, this uh, medication. Whereas with creatine, essentially no side effects. Now it was a short-term study, so we didn't see that their maximal uh, aerobic capacity, which is a reflection of mitochondrial disease, got better. So we and others have used creatine uh, in patients with um, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, there have been at least uh, 10 studies now throughout the world with over uh, 200 patients now enrolled. At the time when I wrote this, there was only 192. But what we found was on average an 8.5% increase in strength and uh, about a pound and a half increase in muscle mass. Uh, 